Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the uh, April 6 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, it's now 6.02. And I believe we're being uh, audio taped by the Frontier Community Access Television um, Station for listening by the public and our residents or later on. I, uh, Janet Shea. Hey, Janet. Hi, uh, John. Me, how you doing? Um, Good. Let me, let me read the agenda so that everybody knows what we're going to be doing. Uh, first item on the agenda is the minutes for the last meeting. We have uh, meetings attended by select board members next, public comments, Old business, we have the vote to accept the uh, FARS stewardship proposal, consider the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership grant proposal, uh, town messaging and actions regarding the pandemic. Uh, I don't have anything under new business. I know we have a couple of things not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. We have the town administrator updates then we go into concerns of the selectmen, mail, and announcements. So that's the, uh, the lineup for tonight. All right. Uh, when we have a vote, we'll have a roll call vote. Um, and every, anybody who speaks, please identify yourself before you speak. All right. Uh, okay. First item is the minutes uh, for the March 30th meeting. Uh, Philip and Bob, have you uh, read the minutes? Yes, they, I don't have any meaningful alterations. <laughs> okay, Bob, are you okay? They were good, yep. All right, as usual. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the March 30th meeting. Do I have a second? Sure. Do I have a, still a second? Philip, yes. right, is that Philip? Okay. Yes. All right, uh, let's take the vote. Uh, Philip? Yes. I and Bob? Yes. Yes, and I will vote yes as well. So the meetings uh, minutes are uh, approved. Uh, what do we have for a uh, minute uh, for me to identify select board members? Philip, do you have anything? Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were all school related uh, meetings. The one on uh, Tuesday, uh, I had to just listen in on a couple of them because all day long I was having wire. They were rewiring the street in front, so I, whatever, I was losing my inner, but uh, yes, lots of, lots of meetings. Um, just trying to deal with the current reality. It, uh, it's, it's, yeah, um, and the various budget requests from the other towns. Okay, all right. That's about it. Bob, what do you have? Uh, Michael, Tuesday, Harry. we had a we had a frontier budget meeting. Had with, you know, we, we had a meeting with Darius, just looking at the uh, the, the capital project that we're working on, and uh, we also on Tuesday had an MMA meeting. Uh, just the MMA is discussing the state of COVID once a week. And on Thursday, Rep. Lay held a meeting with the four towns, and we talked about what's going on in our town. That was it for me. All right, I had a, uh, an MMA personnel committee meeting, and obviously the thing, at the, the major item at that meeting was uh, it was a Zoom conference, and the major item at that conference was the, uh, the coronavirus situation and what uh, other towns are doing about it and how they're handling their personnel situations. Uh, got very in-depth on a couple of areas, so it was, it was very interesting. Uh, okay, next item on the agenda, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Uh, I do. This is Janice. I, I hey, wonder, Janice. What, <laughs> wonder what the decision is coming on the for the town meeting and and uh, 
of proposals like that. Yeah, town meeting. Is it definitely off or? Well, um, we'll be talking about that um, uh, later, and I'm I'm hoping for a uh, a full discussion and decision next week. Okay, just you know, we're curious. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I've got yeah. I've got a lot to say about that later too. So. Um, but yeah. It's, it's, okay. It's, we're gonna it's, we're gonna take that. It's becoming a more complicated decision every day we wait. So. Um, all right. Next item on the agenda is the vote to accept the forest stewardship proposal. Tom, what do we have on that? Uh, well, you all received copies of the three different uh, quotes that came in. Uh, the uh, the low quote was from uh, Longview Forest Management, uh, and uh, with uh, Wigmore Forest Resource Management as well. Um, and uh, that is so. The, so they are the uh, the apparent low bidder. Uh, I, I don't believe there are any questions about whether their proposal actually meets the request for quotes that we sent out. So they appear to be responsive to the request for quotes. And uh, I know that um, I, I, I believe that uh, um, uh, it, it may have been Peggy or it may have been Andrea. Someone was was going to check their references just to make sure that they uh, they are also responsible bidders, and uh, that would make them the responsible and responsive low bidder, which would mean that we would award the contract to them. Um, now, I know uh, Peggy is also on the call to answer any questions about uh, the process or the content of the proposals. So I did check okay. references, and um, the references for Longview were uh, very positive and strong, as well as for more resource management. I'm still trying to connect with one uh, reference, um, but uh, all the references um, so far have been uh, very strong and positive. Okay. Do so you know of them working with anybody else, Peggy? Um, well, for example, uh, Wigmore Resource Management uh, works with uh, the towns of Holyoke and West Springfield. Um, actually on a carbon storage uh, project. Um, and the folks in Longview, they're doing more of the um, inventory and technical work or would be doing more of the inventory and technical work. And so they had some very good references from both uh, Vermont and Massachusetts uh, forest holders, uh, including the Conservation Commission uh, for one of the towns. Um, and. They apparently have a number of town forests and have had very good experience with them. Okay, so uh, Longview, is, Longview is our low bidder and they also have good references. Uh, uh, and, and this is Janet and I, as, as whenever it's appropriate, would like to uh, interject some observations. Go ahead, Joe. Hey. Um, <clears throat> one thing we've, we've all noticed is the very tight time, timeline. Uh, it, it was in, in the grant requirement from the state. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, myself and I'm sure uh, uh, others are concerned about sufficient public input and public priorities. Uh, one significant difference between the uh, Longview proposal and a base date, that the, the base date uh, for the timeline for the first meetings, uh, they say there was the select board, but they include other significant uh, committees on that. And so this is kind of a general comment that we we uh, uh, want to be uh, uh, equal participants in terms of setting the first uh, the priorities. And I don't, sorry folks, and you guys are all doing a great job, but I, you know, I think it's important that, that, that uh, other, other people uh, participate and uh, make that known. And, and particularly with the tight time frame originally, and now of course with the COVID virus, we don't want this to look too much like a rush job. And then therefore, has to make lots of uh, 
a lot of extra steps to invite other people in and to the discussions. So I, I think right. I thought that the, that the uh, Bay State uh, proposal understood the, the more key participants, rather sorry, than just the select board. So that's my comment. All right. Well, uh, once we once we accept the proposal, there will be uh, uh, the opportunity for public comment. Oh, yeah. There will be more than more than the more than comment. Public comment. Yeah. There 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 are we we made as a requirement that there be two public meetings, and and I certainly expect uh, lots of people at at both of those meetings. And you know we we can. We can work with them on, on a detail like that. Inviting people to that select board meeting is not a not a major deal. We, you know, we can we can certainly make sure um, that you, the open space committee, and uh, and and um, um, and you know any other interested uh, board committee commission member uh, can can be an active part of of that discussion. Okay, I mean. So, so, so I would like to say something. Yeah. I would like to say something, Priscilla Lynch, when when you'd like me to. Yeah, go ahead, Priscilla. Okay. Um, so I share Janet's concerns, or want to say also for myself that I think it's a tight timeline um, to have all of this done, and I really don't think it's a lot of meetings and in input. Really, if I'm correct, the grant calls for. A public meeting and then a meeting with the board then the plan and then another public meeting and another member uh, meeting with the board so I really don't think that is a lot of uh, meetings you have to have forest meetings you have to show the people the forest you have to explain what you're what you're suggesting be done and why um, people have to have that opportunity and again, given the COVID situation, I don't think it's very, um, that it's sufficient to, to move ahead within these time frames. Uh, okay. And I would also just Thanks. like to ask, were there just three bids or were there others in these three with the top selected? I believe there were three bids. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, and thank we, you. we have requested an extension from the state recognizing that the time frame is very short. We've received no response about that. Um, the, the low bidder, I specifically asked them whether they still felt comfortable given you know, the challenges of trying to do public outreach in our current situation. Um, they were very open to alternate techniques, um, you know, surveys uh, of the residents of Conway um, holding Zoom meetings. I don't know if it's possible to do smaller group walks. We'd have to, you know, they would have to explore that. But they were um, very committed to conducting public outreach. Um, and I recognize that the budget is tight, so you know there weren't perhaps as many meetings as folks would have liked. Um, but what is what is typical? What is typical for public meetings for this type of situation? Um, I don't know that they're typical. Um, these are the the uh, the first RFQ for forest stewardship plan. So I would need to check with some other folks that have been involved in those. Um, but basically, you know, try to allocate the available funding to create two forest stewardship plans for the two town properties and also um, have public outreach component, which uh, the select board, you know, had emphasized was very important uh, to, to undertake. So th right. this is Phil Cantor. So this is, this is Phil Cantor, and I got a, a, a couple questions about this, because I, 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 I see that the bid requested uh, you know that, that it's all about public outreach, but my 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 thing, and forgive me if this strikes some of you as a stupid question, but, but are 
they obligated by law or contract to do what the town tells them to do during this public outreach or can they still do something else that they think for cog or the or the partnership as a whole whatever did, is, is the town's interest the only interest that they will be going forward with um, on when they draft their plan? Well, this, this grant was for the town of Conway. We simply applied on behalf of the town because there was a very short time frame to pull this together. So the stewardship plan needs to be approved by the town, not by the FERCOG or the partnership. The town is eligible to receive this funding because they're part of the partnership, but the stewardship plans are being created for the town. So the town... Uh, Peggy, uh, or Bill, really, uh, this is Bob. Um, I had a long talk today with, with Alex Barrett, who's the forester, who is mentioned in here. Yes, they have every intention of talking about, you know, protecting the forest and carbon sourcing and climate change and all of the things that I think everyone is concerned with. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think, I don't, I mean, I don't want to say this isn't an issue, but I certainly don't see them as having an agenda. Um, they, they are going to be writing the forest plan that they, that we asked them to write. Not, not anything that they have, you know, in mind. You know, they, they're not going to write a forest plan that, that they want. And what I was really relieved to hear from them today was that the forest plan that they get to write for us because it's our property is not the same as the forest plan they would write if this was Janet writing it for her property that she has in 61A. Sorry, Janet, I'll make that up. But, but you know, you know, when, when, you're a, when you're writing a forest plan to qualify for 61A, the state has a lot of regulations of what you have in there, and it has to have a very strong pro wood product bent to it. And, and even some of the, I don't know if it was this one, but some of these proposals talked about the fact that Here's the check boxes, and you got to check them off. But if you don't check this one, you won't qualify. But we're not trying to qualify for 61A. We can do whatever we want. We, you know, we don't have. We could, we could, we could really make it whatever we want. And they are very prepared and happy to make it whatever we want. We're not trying to qualify for 61A. It's a totally voluntary program, and we're just documenting how we want to treat our forests. So, Bob, this is Phil Cantor again. Let me just let me just ask let me just ask you a follow up on that. So, um, like, it, 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 it is is just a couple of meetings sufficient to get the town's desires across? It, my, my thing is that you know I, what I didn't see in, in the bid was a contractual requirement that they um, that, that that they furnish an initial work product or draft to us for then so that then we can work together on a draft. Like, my concern is that, yeah, they listen to us, they do the best that they can, and then we have to sign something the day before, you know, we're, we're presented with a work product the day before it's due, but before some state agency or something, and we don't get any chance for meaningful feedback or alterations to more perfectly express our desires. Uh, Bill, the, uh, the um, proposal that they put forward uh, that everybody got um, it does say that, that, that they will be presenting uh, a draft uh, first on you, you know well their timeline said uh, first on May 26th and then they're going to um, uh, also on June 1st they'll, they'll have a draft and, and then then they have a second meeting and then they have a they present it to people and then they, they say, continue to shape and refine communities' philosophy and approach to forest stewardship, which they've been doing all along. And uh, that, that's June 12th. And then they don't finalize the plan until after that. So there's a lot of, of drafts that, that they're saying in this plan that, that, that you've got that they're going to be presenting to the town. And, and they do... Um, emphasize that they are shaping and refining 
the community's philosophy and approach to forest stewardship. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure where your where your concern. And we don't sign it until we agree with it. Yeah. Can I can I throw in a brief comment? This sure. is Janet. Um, I think it's up to us to disseminate whatever draft to invite people we know care to do basically to do a lot of outreach and sure. we all have to work together with these pools, you know, sort of to give them different options uh, to make sure that we elicit uh, a broad participation at, in a timely manner. It's going to be tight, but. I think it can be done. So, uh, Priscilla, do you have anything? Yes, I have a couple things. Um, once someone gets his bid and they do a forest plan, we are not committed to following through with that plan, correct? That would then be another decision on the town whether they want to, to contract with someone for that plan. Is that correct? That plan. That plan will be based on, on our public input. Well, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, yes, uh, but I'm just uh, saying that doesn't, we are not committed to go any further if we don't want to, correct? But, but we're shaping the plan, the final outcome. Will be That's not my question, do. whether we will shape the plan or any of that. I'm saying we are we committed to follow then contracting with someone to have that plan go forward. We're not, correct? Okay, no, that's another decision. Is my, that correct? My understanding is the plan will give the town recommendations, and then it's up to the town whether or not they proceed with those recommendations. Okay, if that's my question. If they've then. done a good job with the public outreach and their support for, and I'm, you know, just giving examples to increase carbon storage in the forest, then the town may want to pursue that. If the town is concerned about invasives that have been identified during the inventory process, there might be a recommendation to address the invasives. Mm -hmm. So it, okay. it, it would depend on the town input and the goals that were established, and then they would provide recommendations based on that public outreach and their inventory work of, of the town forest. Mm -hmm. And then the town would right. decide whether it wanted to go forward any further or not. Presumably, right? yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's what I was just checking on. And then I have another question. Will, um, will we get an assessment of how much carbon would be stored in, in that land if we were not to cut it? or how much um, a carbon trust could produce. Will there be assessment of, you know, we have four forests in Conway, two are state forests. They could be part of this carbon trust. Would there be any of that kind of assessment? Um, would there be any kind of assessment uh, comparing the town forest to the state forest and the plans for cutting in those state forests? Um, or is it all seen very separately? Um, and I, how much I, carbon will be lost by what's recommended by their plan? So this particular RFQ wasn't designed to just focus on carbon. Yep. Um, if the town wants to do that, you know, there's another round of grants coming. So like Williamstown specifically just wanted to focus on analyzing carbon storage and yeah. and trying to determine whether or not there was a, a carbon market project uh, that yeah. might be viable um, with the town forest. Um, yeah. I know there's the family um, forest carbon program that uh, the Nature Conservancy and others are working on. Um, and so if that's something that the and that's for, for private private landowners initially, but if some of those tools and techniques are of interest as, you know, I don't know if it will be in time for this particular project, but if a priority of the town is to increase carbon storage, then presumably there would be some recommendations in the forest stewardship plans about how to accomplish that. I don't, I don't, I'm not a forester, so I don't know with this level of budget, what kind of carbon inventory they can do. 
but if that that might be a follow up record recommendation if you know after their inventory work because it's you know two large properties so they have a lot this of is, inventory this, work this is, Janet was just a, a minor point here the Longview proposal said they would address they would look at uh, carbon accumulation I think they're going to do like an inventory right and so it, at some level anyway they have, at have some level, work yes. in their proposal yes right at some level I just don't right. know the, the the level of detail, my understanding is the level of detail to do a, like a carbon market credit mm -hmm. project is, is very, very detailed. So I don't see them dealing well, with the two state forests, so. though. You, you know, they're, they're going to look at our two town forests. I understand that. But we do have two state forests that are all each slated for logging. And there could potentially be the um, effort to see if we could put those with our force and do a carbon trust with all of that land rather than cutting them. And that should be something we could should look at. And so I was hoping or, or thinking that it would be worth asking, and I'm glad that Peggy mentioned it, that we could ask the FERCOG to uh, write a grant to fully study pro-forestation and carbon trust, so we can compare the two. Um, this is Phil Kanner again. Peggy, I really like your description of what Williamsburg is up to. Um, yes. And, and so, it, and it, it, uh, um, just, it, it is participation in this grant process that we're talking about impact at all our ability to move forward in a Williamsburg uh, the duplicate kind of a project, like like you mentioned, I don't think so because this is for this past round, and you know, admittedly there was a very short time frame to come up with a project and a, you know pull together the grant proposal. But now there's another round of grants that are out, which is I think your second topic of discussion. And so if if you want a Williamstown type proposal. I yes. can try and get their scope of work. Um, the professor that um, has been working on this is also a member of the uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Board, um, and he's a professor at Williams College. So um, he would, I'm sure, be uh, interested in sharing what they're learning in their, in their town forest and how they're approaching it. I'd be really interested to learn a lot more about that and hear a lot more about that. Um, so, yeah, I'm all for that. All right, well, right now what we're considering is the far stewardship plan for the next step that we're going for. We so I have one more far. question for Peggy. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so this, we wrote this grant uh, jointly with Conway and Rowe. And yes. do Conway and Rowe have to choose the same, the same vendor? I assume they do. Um, uh, and do you know I what's believe, happening with Rowe? And I, I have sent all the information to Rowe. I'm waiting to hear back from them. Um, so I hope that, you know, Rowe is um, moving forward with uh, accepting the, the quote, um, but I, they have been difficult to reach at their, at their town hall. Today is the day that we're required to reply, isn't it? Well, in, in our RFQ, this was the date that we, we were doing our best to, you know, award um, the, the, uh, the contract. Um, but given the, the situation that we're in, you know, when we wrote the grant, and we didn't we didn't know the extent of uh, I think the disruption sure. at town hall. So, um, but we would like to be able to award it as soon as possible because we haven't gotten an extension yet. So we want whoever is you know Longview and Wigmore Resource Management Forest Resource Management to have as much time as they can. Sure. If, the time if we can help you talk to Roe, we would be happy to do that. Okay. 
Well, it will be helpful if I can, you know, if you all decide that the, you want to go with this proposal, I can email them and let them know that you've accepted it. And, you know, I've already sent um, several emails. Great. It has been reviewed by Walkquist. There's, that's their Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership board member. He found all the proposals uh, to be solid, and so um, I had emailed them that, you know, Longview's uh, proposal was low and that the references I had checked were very positive and, you know, requested to find out how, you know, what the next step was with the select board. So hopefully I will hear back from them soon. Great. So, all right, so, so this what we so, have on so, Don, Don, so, this is um, Phil Kander again. So just one, well, Longview was the low bidder and Janet, was Longview also the only bidder that mentioned the carbon, mm -hmm. the, the, the measurement of some, on some, uh, uh, in some aspect, it was uh -huh. in their documents? I'm not sure. I can't, I can't uh, off the top of my head say that. You know, I mean, I think it's important for us to remember that we tell them at the onset what's really important to whichever of these firms. I mean, they're all good proposals, and if you tell them that if the town agrees, uh, that that's the most important thing. I mean, there are other considerations, like habitat, uh, in my view, but, but, you know, if at the outset, you know, you tell them this is, you know, your top priority, we can see how many other folks agree with that, because uh, they have to respond to what we want. All right, Janet, you, you were satisfied with the Longview proposal and what they put in it, correct? Yes, yes, except for, you know, sort of not giving other other stakeholders, you know, sufficient notice at the outset, but I, I think that's okay. right. We can work with that and, you know, plan a, a long select board meeting where you have to listen to some other people. John, if you're okay they, with they, that? Well, they did. They, they did, they did identify, because we had identified um, during the, you know, RFQ process, um, some of the key committees, and, and maybe there's more that should have been listed, but it included the Conservation Commission, Open Space Committee, Planning Board, Conway Grammar School, um, as, you know, key folks to, to reach out to. Okay, so they've expressed the flexibility in their plan. Yeah, I think from there, from my understanding of them is that you know they're they're looking for public input. So those particular municipal boards were identified, but um, it's important that as you know as many folks are, are involved as can be. Okay. All right. All right. Um, any other any other comments or questions? All right. All right. I'll. I'll I'll make a motion that we accept the long view proposal to um, develop a forest stewardship plan. Uh, and basically what we want is maximum public input from our residents on developing this plan and shaping this plan. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the dollar, what's but, the dollar amount? Uh, a little and less than 20,000. No, this one's like 32. Yeah, yeah, for, for Conway. Well, there's, well yeah, so each, each town has a $20,000 grant. Of the 20,000, there's 2,000 for procurement and grant administration and 18,000 for whatever the specific project is. And so Longview combined yeah, okay. But for both of the the towns came in at thirty two 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 five. All right, Philip is it Philip Zach is there's a motion. Do you have and we have a second, Philip, do you wanna vote? Alright, so you know how you can do that? Um Philip uh, Yeah, I guess. Yay or nay? Yes. So okay, Yay. Okay. Robert. Yay. Yay. Okay, and I'll I'll be yay as well. So we have a unanimous vote to uh, retain a uh, long view. And again, we certainly want maximum participation by the public 
and we certainly want to shape this plan in whatever way the residents of Conway want. Uh, and Priscilla, I hope that you're involved in this process. I intend to be. Okay, that's great. Any other comments? Okay. All right, next item on the agenda. Uh, we want to consider the, the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership grant proposal. Peg, do you have something for us on that as well? Um, actually, I'm in listening mode. Uh, Janet had some ideas, um, but I'm, I'm uh, just here to listen and to help out with the grant application. And then since there is more time, you know, the, gr the grant application can come directly from Conway um, to the state so that, you know, the contract is between the state and, and Conway. Okay. All right. Janet, do you have anything on this? Yeah. Um, I had talked to Peggy, and she was helpful. Um, she thought that my initial, our initial ideas were a little bit too um, too diverse, and that would be, might be better to focus on just some uh, the trail enhancements for recreational um, uh, recreational tourism. And uh, Allison Hunter Wright, that you all know, right, really agreed, and she got some approval as part of her job to uh, get the mapping on the uh, Mohegan Mohawk Trail, the section that comes uh, through Conway, and we would do some mapping to see uh, where well, we know where some big gaps in that trail are, uh, and take a look at what would need to be done to uh, continue uh, that trail portion and at the same time assessing and surve surveying or, or uh, getting ideas on enhancing um, some recreational tourism and, and uh, uh, business opportunities that might be associated with a, with a, a, a bigger, long expanse Trail. So that's where we stand. We, we don't, you know, we, we don't have um, any more in writing on that at the moment, but I'm, I'm expecting that that will be forthcoming. Jen, I, Jen, I know who has all those maps. Who? Oh. Um, uh, uh, the woman uh, that, that has the, that, that owns the, or that started the railway museum with her husband. Polly. 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 Yeah. Has all that stuff. Yes, and 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 I I talked to Allison about that, and and we can get some of it from her. But but Allison said that this is that DCR has these the trail people, and that's what they do. So uh, so yes, I mean the information is out there, and she's going to help assemble it and look to get it, get it in hopefully a, a usable form to, to to write something up in draft. Okay. okay, and, and how, how much is this grant? Uh, maximum 20000 Okay. Uh, this is Priscilla, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. I just I wanted to know, what is the deadline? I heard Peggy say there's a much longer time well, period to apply. <laughs> uh, I believe it's in May. It's May, I don't yes. have, have it right Around, in front of me. My recollection was the 13th or something, but that's the middle of May. Oh, okay. All right, so we, we have um, like five weeks to get this in, correct? Yes. yes. And, and Allison is going to Allison is going to help you with it. Yes. Okay. Are you going to have a little uh, public meetings on this, Jen? Um, <laughs> if we can, uh, I don't really. Or, know or at least or at least public conference calls. Sure. Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, once we get something, you know, addressed in writing, then right, you know, then we can circulate it, and yeah, we can try to have a public conference call. I mean, this is like an ad hoc. You know, I'm just one member of the open space committee. Uh, we do, we don't have an active trail, a separate trail committee at the time at this time. So that's why the open space committee has sort of been involved. But I mean, I can call. We can call. Uh, we did assemble a trail group, and we've had a couple of trail walks and meetings, and, oh, you know, we have a list of other people that we invited previously, so we could try to have an online 
open space committee meeting with these other folks. Uh, and, you know, we'll probably get a fair amount of input that way. Okay. So, so there's, we have about a month <laughs> uh -huh. to get something uh, put together and the board can vote on it, say, at the, at the first meeting in May. Yes. Okay. All right. But in principle, we're, we're okay with moving forward on this? Uh, well, yeah. that's the board. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, basically going to this grant proposal. We're, we're, we're in favor of this. Correct? Are you asking the board? All right. Select board? Yeah. Yeah. Bob and Phil. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea. I like the idea of the Williamstown project even more, but, but I like... Yeah, but um, I like fixing our trails. This is something else. This is yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're in principle. We'll we'll basically revisit this three weeks to a month from now after Janet and Allison have put something together and have had some public input, and then we can move forward. Is that is that good with everyone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, anything else we have to consider on this at this point, Tom? Nope. All right. So, Priscilla Lynch, I'd like to say something again. Sure. Okay. So, I don't know if this is the time to re-say that, um, what I said before, but uh, could the town request that the FERCOG write a grant for to do uh, a study of the uh, carbon proforestation in our town forest and the potential for um, a carbon trust. Yeah, I think which we then could be compared with the, it, yeah, the forestry plan. We, we, we could do that at the next round. Peggy, did you say that? Yes. So we're in the next round, right? Or, yeah, this is the next round. So you, I think you need to make a decision whether you want a Williamstown type project or whether you want a, a trail, a recreational trail project. Uh, well, one or the, other. The, the budget well, well, isn't that big. So right, and, and, and this is Janet. Is, is twenty thousand dollars enough to do the the, the, the full carbon study? I mean, and, and my. My information, I mean, from Allison, the forester said that there are these, uh, that plans are being developed, the studies are going on from Vermont, and some things are developing one for municipalities to buy in, that, that we're just a little ahead of the curve, and there's more work that needs to be done, and then, you know, whether that could be done for $20,000, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if there's a sufficient budget. I would, I would uh, be... You know, I can contact the town of Williamstown and, and, and request their scope of work. That would be great. All right. Yeah. Is, is that, can that be done in, as part of this uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership proposal? Yes, that's one of the eligible activities, is looking at carbon storage. Or, or should we be doing that on another grant proposal? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know uh, other grants right now that are out there to, to do that type of work, but um, so I, you know, I uh, the town needs to provide some. I'm happy to help, you know, draft a, a preliminary scope that Janet and the Open Space Committee can then, you know, use and work with. Um, I just need direction whether it's a trail project or whether you want to pursue the Williamstown type of project. Question right, from Priscilla? Yeah. Go ahead, Priscilla. Um, so it is, you can't do two requests, right? Two grant requests, you could only do one? There's only $20,000 per town, so I don't think it's realistic to expect right. that you're going to get both projects. So I right. think okay. you're going to have a decent project that you need to to, you know, identify which one is the priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Janet, can you can you get together with Peg and uh, get Priscilla's input on this and figure out where we're going with this? Uh, you know, I I, actually, I I thought it would be 
consulted with Allison, and I think I read this to you last week, but I will tell you what she said. Uh, uh, within the next year, DCR should have a carpet market program to offer for municipalities. I, is okay. Allison, I am currently working with uh, Mass Audubon to establish this program. I mean, I think this is just where over our head and premature at this point. And mm -hmm. that's, that's my personal opinion. All right, so there's something, there's, so, there's something so, being developed for, for carbon credits by the DCR? For municipalities, that's what she said. Okay. So J Janet, this, so this is Philip again. So I, mean, I hear what you're saying, Janet, but you know, I also know that what is it, Springfield, West Springfield, I forget what other towns down there have formed something for a cart, whatever. Yes, and I, yes. And, 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 and I hear, I, I think and I hear Westfield, the town of Westfield. Westfield, right, right. And, that, and then I and then I hear about the what the, the what Peggy just outlined as as Williamstown's project. And I'd like to know more about it before we just well, write it let's, off. Well, okay, well, let's let's get a uh, nothing nothing major is going to go on. You know, probably for the next week. Let's take uh, Peggy's going to get Williamstown scope of work and right. You know, and the amount that that's going to cost them, and then we can, maybe we can just look at that. Yeah. All right. Why don't, why don't we Why don't we table this item until next week when we have more information? Is that satisfactory with everyone? Sure. Sure. We weren't voting on this, right? I mean, this is a discussion. Right. But we wanted to consider where this project is going. Yes. Right. right. All right. So let's 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 talk about this next week again. All right. Great. Okay. Is everybody happy with that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Philip and Robert. And Janet yep. and Priscilla. Yeah, I just want to say my intent in suggesting this was not to um, invade on, not invade or whatever, uh, what Janet and other people were looking to do. You know, I didn't, I didn't suggest this understanding or thinking that, you know, that it might mean not for them. You know what I mean? No, we talked about yeah. this last week, Priscilla, right. as a right. possibility okay. that seemed like it wasn't the right time. And mm -hmm. that Peggy, Peggy can look at it. That'd be great. Peggy, Peggy, do you have any, Janet, do you have any idea how much uh, uh, um, Williamstown is paying for this? Well, they're, they're, a, they're in the same program as Conway, so their maximum budget was 20000 Having said that, I believe that they had already started work on carbon storage uh -huh. analysis um, okay. through... I believe it was the college. Um, so oh. this this oh. may be a continuation of their work. Yeah. So I will try and get as much information as I can about what Williamstown is doing and then send that along to you and Tom so um, that they can get that out to the, so Tom can get okay. that out to select board members. Okay. Great. Okay. 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 Great. Do you have, Peggy, do you have any idea how competitive these grants are? Um, well, all the towns that requested funding this round received it. There's a set aside specifically for the towns that have opted in to okay. the Bob Trail oh, and oh, partnership. So, so, if, so if we had a good proposal in for whatever it's for, we have a good likelihood of getting funded. I, I would think so. Um, okay. You know, the only thing I, you know, the only reason why I hesitate is um, it seems that uh, the financial impact of COVID-19. <laughs> mm, right, um, right. So, so uh, everything's going to be frozen, right? Well, I don't know, but, you know. The state I, is taking its budget and setting it on fire. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I just, you know, I don't yeah. want to say right. it's, it's the same situation as the first round of grants, I guess. Yeah.
Uh, I would say mostly Tom. He wrote up something that I commented on, uh, and, uh, and so Tom was more prepared to talk about. It. All right, Tom. Yeah. So my my goal here is, is not to come up with any specific message, but to come up with more of a communications plan that that um, will satisfy. Uh, the town's responsibility to get information out to residents. So I've, um, I've proposed a goal and some objectives and some tasks to meet those objectives. Um, and uh, it, would, it would help me if, if uh, I could get your input on, I mean, this is just a first draft, um, but I had as a goal of, our, of the town's communication uh, to strongly encourage residents to adopt and maintain best practices for interrupting the spread of the disease. Um, it occurs to me we also have another goal, which is to keep people from coming into town buildings. So that, you know, that, that should probably be part of it too. Um, and, uh, but, but, you know, we've already, we've already done the uh, tasks to uh, meet the objectives associated with that. Uh, this is just so it just in terms of communication um, uh, we, we, we uh, want to make sure basic information is available to everyone I want to make sure alternate means of communication are available um, for people for committee meetings for getting in touch with people um, and and I guess that just means sort of flexibility on on uh, the part of staff and boards and committees. Uh, I want to make sure that people in town um, are getting their basic needs met and that they know the town is concerned with that. Uh, I want to know that um, our emergency, I want them to know that our emergency responders are prepared um, and that, you know, when they should call for help if they need to. And uh, it would be nice to have some kind of a plan for the future, though I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how much of that we can do, except you know we're relying on the advice of experts. Uh, but related to those things, I came up with some tasks um, to make sure basic every information is available to everybody. Uh, where we are. Keeping the, we're trying to keep the website updated. We have a page that's specific for this, and we keep adding information to it and replacing old information with new information as much as we can. Uh, one thing we might consider would be a townwide mailing, um, which would also drive people to the website. Um, uh, related to uh, alternate means of communication, um, I think we want to maintain our conference call lines, but uh, uh, I, I know we're, we're also looking into Zoom and or or some other format. I, I think um, Google Meetup, Zoom, Zoom is probably okay. Uh, we would need um, more than one line because more than one board meets at the same time. The, but what we would need to do is make that capability available to all town boards and committees that wanted to use it. That might mean uh, getting up to three accounts. Um, and we would want the $15 a month at least version of that, which, which provides a lot more flexibility and um, the ability for the host to control the meeting. Right. So Tom even said that the state was offering go to meeting for free for 90 days. Yeah, I don't want to get stuck on this one right now. Yeah. Uh, right. So um, that in works order to uh, works fine. Uh, in yeah, order to make sure there. basic needs are being able to be met, um, uh, I don't have any communication strategies on those. Uh, if, if we did a townwide mailing, we might be able to, you know, emphasize um, uh, various uh, Meals on Wheels programs, which are still going on, uh, and of course the, the food pickup at the school. Uh, 
and maybe we want more specific communication to vulnerable residents. Um, to uh, to ensure that the emergency responders are prepared. That this actually goes beyond communication, but um, we we need sufficient supplies, and I'm happy to uh, to mention that we got a supply of 100. N95 masks and 100 uh, level one masks today. From uh, the National Guard brought them up from uh, MEMA. Um, but we also we also need to come up at some point with a with a quarantine and isolation plan for first responders uh, in case they need to be in case they get exposed and need to be kept away from their their homes and families. Uh, and I know that MEMA MEMA is working on one aspect of that and. Uh, I believe um, the FERCOG may be, may be working. Uh, some towns have memorandums of understanding with hotels and things like that. So I'm, I'm also looking into that sort of thing. And, Tom, uh, Tom the, uh, the, the lead story right now on Mass Live is about the Hampshire County Search Sheriff securing an 89-bed facility for first responder quarantine for the three-county area. That is excellent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I knew he was working on something. I didn't know it was for the three county area. So that that's good news. Yeah. It's, a, it's uh, a, with, a, with, a, with a real big capacity and it's supposed to be, it's all grant funded and it would all be free of charge to the towns that need the services. Oh, that is, that is great. Um, <clears throat> in planning for the future, I have let all of our department heads know that they should be tracking all of the costs associated with responding to the pandemic uh, because we, we will be eligible for 75% reimbursement from FEMA. Uh, we need a plan for town meeting and a plan to communicate that to residents. And uh, ultimately we'll need a plan for the uh, FY21 budget, uh, which of course we'll be talking a lot about. And uh, I understand Secretary Heffernan is going to be making his announcement tomorrow or, or at least in, in introducing um, some revenue numbers. So I came up with these things as uh, partly as a reflection of what's going on now, but partly as an attempt to get um, uh, to help, I hope, stimulate some thought about uh, more and better ways to get the things done we need to do. And I'm particularly concerned with communicating with residents. So uh, I'm, I'm welcoming any and all input in, uh, into uh, especially um, communicating with, with residents and then uh, and anything else anybody has to say about uh, planning. So Tom, right, Tom again. We, we, can't, we can't do anything until uh, we hear from Heffernan, okay, tomorrow, and then we can figure out what's happening with the budget, and then we can figure out what we're gonna do about town meeting. As so far as communicating with residents, um, we've, we've got the website, uh, we've, we've got our emergency management team uh, basically monitoring our, our vulnerable population. Uh, the state has tremendous amount of information on their websites. So, you know, do you, are you talking about personally communicating with each resident? How are we... Uh, no, not necessarily. I just want to be sure that we're doing everything that we can. Uh, one of my um, one of my ideas was that um, we're we're approaching uh, having a uh, publishable town report, and I was thinking that we might send that out uh, if you know when and if, if and when we do uh, uh, postpone town meeting. Uh, one thing we might do is send the town report out to everybody with a message about the postponement of town meeting um, and so so that they know that the town has a plan and what it is and get some information about uh, how we're handling the situation. So, uh, Tom, the, the, a, a couple of things. So, first of all, the, the, the town meeting thing. I, the, the number one question I get asked like every day is what's up with that? Why are we the last town in the county that hasn't made a decision or publicized a decision about it? And um, the, the, why, the, why do you, why do you, uh, Philip, why do you think we're the last town in the county? 
I don't know. That's what people keep coming up to me and saying. Okay. I don't even well, know if that's, that's true. true. Oh, you don't know. So why are you why are you spreading it? We're not the last town in the county to do that. There's a lot of towns that haven't decided on that yet. All right. Well, we know. Well, let's, well, let's we not know. Pass, let's not pass around misinformation. All right. We know. We know. We, we know that our neighbors. We're not going to do anything about town meeting until we know what's happening at the state level, so we know what's happening with our budget, and then we can make that decision. We, do, we know that we're going to have to postpone town meeting. The, the, the question is that, that, um, that, that the, other, the other three towns in Frontier, I believe, have all set new dates. Um, I know Deerfield just set their date for the last Monday in June and the election for the 30th of June. Um, and my concern in this, and I hope that we can all agree that the four frontier towns need to have their town meeting on different nights, and that we need to, we need to coordinate with the other three towns to that extent. Um, because so Sunderland has also said their do, bill. I believe it's June 5th. Right, because the superintendent can only be in one room at one time. And you can't put up the, the number one thing that people have questions about is the school budget. And you can't put a school budget through without the people there to answer the questions. And all you have to do is make a few phone calls and coordinate to keep that from happening. Um, let, let me just uh, jump in here for a second and say that, that I do, um, I have planned for a discussion on this at, um, the, at next week's select board meeting. Um, and, and I hope a, I hope that results in a in a in a decision. Um, what I I I, uh, I will assume at this point that that uh, that's that's the most um, that's the most pressing need to for uh, communication with residents. And and I'll just let me just end this by saying if people have other responses to the um, to the item under consideration. Uh, the, the general question of messaging and actions, I would be happy to receive them. I didn't really understood what you just said, but that's okay, I guess. Um. <laughs> Tom, can I make one more comment on that? Uh, this is Bob. Um, so I'm, I'm really appreciative that we're all doing this by phone today just to see whether or not you guys think this is working. And, and I believe that we need to figure out how to make it work. But the way we should be doing this is using some kind of video rather than phone calls. And hopefully lots of us have been using Zoom or pre-conference call or go to meeting or one of these wonderful services. And I'd really like it if next week's meeting we're using one of those services rather than just phone calls. Um, yeah, I, I, and one of the reasons is that Bob, I talked to Bob. Bob, Bob, I talked to Tom about that this week, and next week's meeting is going to be a video conference. Great. Well, I'm thrilled. And the, the good thing about that, John, is that if we held it by video conference, we can have it broadcast live over Comcast um, through, through the Comcast server. And uh, I think that will be great if we have this discussion live for everybody in town to listen to uh, and not necessarily participate unless they want to join the video conference, but they could be watching it on, on their TVs um, and about, about this discussion about when to hold our uh, town meeting. So that's why right. I think well, I'm a, a video conference, I, I like a video conference much better than I like a telephone conference. Be great. great. Me too. And Zoom, Zoom has worked very well from the, uh, from the calls I've been on with Zoom. So it, I think that would be my top choice. No objection. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with all of them. Google Meet works fine too, but they, um, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's just make it happen. Whatever, whatever works. Yep. All right, so plan on next week's meeting being a, a, a video conference. Great. Okay. Uh, we don't have any new business. We no. have uh, 
you have a couple of items not anticipated? Jan, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Hello. Hi, Thanks Jan. Thanks for hanging in. Hi. Tom, do you want to introduce this, uh, what we, what's, what's happened with uh, Joe Markarian? Oh, we'll do the second one first. Yeah, um, I, I, um, I tried to contact him uh, and didn't get any response. And then I, I asked Peggy Sloan and she said, he, is, he has definitively and completely retired from any kind of consulting. I heard he was back Hello. consulting for the state. I heard he was back consulting for the state department, the, the, the Department of Revenue. All right, we, we, we basically- Well, he's not doing it for Conway. <laughs> Philip, he's not- First yeah. last week, basically to, to accommodate you for this, Joe Mercarian is not responding to us. Um, and Jan has a recommendation that I'm happy with. Um, and Jan, you want to go into it? Well, sure. Yeah, we've, we've rolled it out a couple of times now and uh, looked at it with the finance committee as well. So we're proposing a 15-year uh, note, a state house note for 998000 is a figure I have now, and I assume that's probably going to go lower once we have our kids in. Right, Tom? We hope so. Yeah. And so, you know, several months ago, we made we made this proposal, and we conservatively estimated a three and a half percent interest, and uh, we'll likely get much lower than that now. So these figures will only get better. Um, and I don't know if you recall that table or if Tom put it in front of you. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so what we're what we're proposing is to offset the taxpayer impact uh, for the first 10 years of the loan by using diminishing amounts of free cash. So you're basically heading off the high interest in the beginning of the loan and stabilizing it through the 15-year period. So your impact uh, to the resident per $100,000 stays right around uh, 25 to $30. Uh, so, and that's my recommendation is that, you know, 15 years we're paying $65,000 in principal each year, well, starting at 73, going down to 65, and, uh, and keeping the impact stable. And so, just so you know, when we, you know, we, we voted to, to borrow, we, we approved the borrowing, but we don't approve how we borrow for the term we borrow, et cetera, um, as long as we stay within the Mass General Law guidelines. So that is somewhat up to us if we want to pay it off from Perper. You know, we have to go with a shorter loan because you, you can't prepay these. So, Dennis, Dennis right. I, I have a question, and I, and I know it's probably like kind of half baked, but um, I just remember always sitting at all these meetings with Joe. And he would always try to tell us that whenever you're looking at a longer-term financial instrument, always compare it with the short-term stuff, the one-year revolving, whatever, and that um, look, and did, have, have we done all that? I mean, I'm sure you have, but um, uh, um, you know what I'm talking about? But, but you can't, uh, if we do one-year revolving notes, then the maximum time we can go is about five years. So if you want... But, it might have been moved up to 10, but our financial advisor is not advising us to go any more than five years with them because of, of the market. Your interest rate will, you know, just start going up. Yeah. So um, this is the route that she's advised us to. It's actually not my, my plan. It's, it's hers. Um, she's been our financial advisor for at least 20 years now, uh, yeah, as long as I can remember. So... Um, it's, it's a small note in her in her uh, world, but right. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, this is Bob. Can I ask you a question too? Sure. So my assumption is that the interest rate will be lower than three and a half. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it hasn't gone negative yet, but but it's it's down. Right. 
And we knew that it would be lower even six months ago when we made this table. Now right. it's going to be even lower than that. So That's right. Uh, I, I, and, and that means that the loan will be less expensive. Does that mean that that we would still give the same, keep the same amount of free cash and it would cost people in town less? Or would we, would we keep it at about 30 or $35, I think you said, per average resident and lower the amount of free cash? So that would be totally up to us every year when we go to town meeting. How much, you know, you, you have a plan and, you know, when we when we get the the final numbers, the bid, we can we can actually make that free cash plan again. We'll have to right, have right, to. okay, great. Uh, you make that free cash plan again, and then hope that your your people follow it. That's all you can do. And if they if they don't vote the free cash each year, then the town has to raise and appropriate. But the payment is still there. You yeah, know, yeah, sure. It's a matter of how we pay for it and the impact on the taxpayer. Right. Yeah. So we're not really voting on the amount of free cash right today, but you're, but that's correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Jen, uh, Jen, I, one more question, and that's sort of just just because the this is the, the garage itself, the facility itself is still a work in progress. The the planning for it, even that, um, even though it was all lined up, I don't know if you know this within the past couple of weeks that that project was all lined up to go. Uh, um, but they've secured the help of Franklin Tech's uh, uh, carpentry class, uh, plumbing and electrical classes. I did. And that, and, and that um, the conservative estimates are, you know, that, that it's going to shave $200,000 off of the project. Um, so, and, and, so what's your but, estimate now? Are you, are you thinking that, that it might be down to $750,000? Or how low are we going to go? Because... I think where you're going with that is as we get lower, we might consider a shorter term, for sure. So that, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going. Like, I, and I, um, uh, you know, the, the problem with that, is, of course, is that if they never, you know, it, it's good, it, um, it, it, just because they say they're going to show up, they're kids and it's a school and they might, you know, they might have different priorities in six months. <laughs> um, uh, so so we're, that that's kind of what everybody's, uh, clutching their pearls about, but um, but it, it's it's a they want to participate right now. The, the faculty was there, the administration was there. They all are very eager to do it. This is exactly what they're looking to do. They say, um, but uh, but until they actually show up and do it, then you know it's not done. <laughs> um, so so that's that's sort of and I guess where I was going with that, besides just the sh that you know at what point does the shorter note thing make sense? What was also, you know, right when the money is available, they might not um, want it all right away. Or they, do you, do you know what I mean? Um, that yeah. they, they might so, choose not to draw it. And um, so we might, I, I don't know how that all works, but um, I would hope that we don't borrow anything that we don't need to spend on the project. Well, we're all right, well, right, right now, right, Jan, right now, this is what we're going to borrow. This is what we we voted on, correct? Nine hundred ninety-eight. Yes, that's what you approved okay. me to borrow. Yes. Right. Okay. And I was approved at town meeting. Yes. Right. Okay. So, Jen, Jen, so, you were you were about to answer the question though. So you can um, I don't I don't know why that answer wasn't. I don't know why. So did. Well, but what I wanted to say is. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, I, I got a funny message. Um, so what I wanted to say is that we're, we're funding it with uh, two different sources. We have stabilization money and the loan. Um, what we want to be careful of is if we don't use all the money from the loan, it, it sits in a special, special revenue fund and it can only be used for projects of, of similar uh, size you know, that fall under the same category that we're borrowing under in that general law. So sometimes you can get your money all tied up there. So I, I, was, the, I spoke with the accountant and he recommends that we, we spend from the loan first and then 
the stabilization fund. And if we don't spend all the money from stabilization, then we go back to town meeting and, and return that or change it to another stabilization source. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, you're not going to buy money that you don't use. Um, I hope. Well, yeah, but um, borrowing money and having it fit in a stabilization fund is not the way I would ever choose to proceed. That's not that. what I... Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, 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 I mean, I, you know, the, the, um, I, I, I do wish that we would have had like, Walter on the, Walter and Chief Kenny on this just, just to see how comfortable they are reducing the request because they haven't been asked about this. And they're the ones that have the comfort level. Are they comfortable reducing the amount of the loan? Because um, uh, that would be, if, if they're not going to be, if they don't have plans to spend that much money, then I don't want to borrow that much money. Um, because, and they would know if we just asked. Okay. Well, it, it can wait another week or another two weeks or something, but I, I don't think you should wait very long because the financial situation the town's going to be in, I'm worried because I won't be able to front any of the money to pay for the garage. When I say I, I mean the town. Right, right. Um, you know, the cash flow isn't going to be there without the loan. Right, exactly. So, right, so. If, you, if we start asking to pay bills and then I, I haven't got the money in, I'm going to be in trouble. I, I, I have to admit that I feel different than you feel. And I, you know, I really feel like there is a serious risk that the tech school is not going to be able to do what they're telling us. See, and I, you know, I, I, um, this is this is the perfect reason why we should have Kenny and and Walter on the call next next week. Um, because they 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 right, have a they, lot of they, they, they have a lot of information specific to this point. Right. They don't they don't have the specific information we need either, because they're they're going to make an estimate here, Philip. It's not certain, okay? It's not certain at all. Uh, they're going to say, I sure hope so. Um. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do here. All right, this is what we'll do. We'll wait till next week. Whatever information we have next week, okay, we're going to vote on. Great. All right? Okay. Everybody satisfied with that? That's okay, Jim? That's okay with me. And in the meantime, I will uh, email you all the uh, spreadsheets so that you have them to look at. And if there's any other way... You know, if you want me to work up the numbers, if you want me to, to plug in a 10-year note, um, you know, or, or a more realistic, you know, 2% interest scheme, I can do that, too. I, I, so, I, think, 15, I think 15 years is the lowest we want to go. I think 10 okay. years would be too much in terms of, of the amount we'd, we'd be paying. The impact uh, on the taxpayer, yeah. And the, and the taxpayers, yeah, yeah. But I think it's worth running the num- I think it's worth running the numbers though, Jim, because when you talk about really low interest, that the difference really begins to, to evaporate. And um, if there's not much difference between it, it, when you get down to one and a half, whatever percent, there's not much difference between ten and fifteen. So um, exactly why we would why would go to ten, Philip? Huh? All right. Yeah. There's not going to be a lot of difference between the rate we're going to get for 15 and the rate we're going to get for 10. Yeah, and Phil, I think what you're looking at too is, you know, if we get a better rate, then that should, then we should give that back to the taxpayer. They have less impact on their tax bill rather than shorten it up and, and keep it high. I mean, folks are going to be hurting in the next few years, so. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I guess you know, my my thing is that if if um. If we don't need that that big top line number, if if the, um, and, and I think uh, I think we we can get more information about what the exact amount is from the committee because they're really on top of it. Yeah. So, and ten years, actually fifteen years is really not very long for a project like this. Right. All right. Next All right. next item, Thomas. 
Yeah, uh, this also has to do with Jan. Uh, we have the ability to waive late fees and extend uh, the property tax uh, due date and also extend the date for exemption, exemption applications. And uh, as I understand it, uh, there's an ongoing discussion in the uh, treasurer community about uh, the details uh, that that those possibilities entail. And it, while it, it, it sounds good sort of on the surface, there are a lot of logistics that are still being discussed. And we may not, um, uh, I, I, I don't think we'll, we'll be ready to make a decision on that tonight, but uh, Jan can offer her perspective on on the issues. Jan, yeah, so, yeah, so um, an act to address challenges faced by municipalities and state authorities resulting from COVID-19. Um, we got the DLS bulletin just today uh, via email. We, we knew this was coming about, of course, for some time now, but it finally passed into law. And there's two sections that affect us, and uh, section 10, there's two parts of that that affect us. The first part is that it allows us to extend our real estate due date from June 1st to, I'm uh, sorry, from May 1st to June 1st. And I'm yep. definitely in favor of that. And then the second part of that section uh, allows us to extend uh, abatement and exemption or actually just exemption applications to a later date. And that doesn't actually apply to us. That only applies to quarterly tax bills. So we can take that one right off, Tom. Okay. Um, and then in section 11, there's two parts. They're proposing or they're allowing us to, um, for all bills that were due after March 10th and paid before June 30th, we could waive all fees and interest. And um, I'm also in favor of that, but there's this funny little catch in there that, well, if we have real estate bills due June 1st, but we can waive interest up to June 30th, well, isn't the due date June 30th? So there's, there's a lot of talk going on about that. And in addition, once, we, uh, once you decide to accept these sections, I have to send out notice to every taxpayer. So bills have already gone out, which means I have another set of mailings that's going to uh, cost us, I, I estimated, $600 in stamps and seven to eight hours of personnel time to get them out the door. Jeez. So, um, can, you know, we can do postcards to be slightly less money, but it is yeah. a full week notice that CLS is recommending we send. Oh, so it has to be. Tiny, 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 tiny print. <laughs> um, there's a few things circling around in our treasurer and collectors association questions people have had, like Tom said, that the, the details of actually putting this in action. And our um, chairperson has suggested that we all just hold off, you know, another another day or two till they figure all this out. They're actively having conversations with BLS to figure out how we're really going to take care of it. So I hate to let it go another week because I am in favor of giving folks a break and I've calculated some numbers for you. Um, if we forgave uh, the interest through June 30th, last year we collected $3,000 in interest and 600 in fees. So that's, that's revenue the town would be losing. It's relatively small. And um, if we accepted the June 1st due date without uh, we received June 30th. Last year, we collected 900 in interest and, and no fees on real estate through through June 1st. So, you know, those impacts are small. And um, I don't know. I wonder if it's even possible to meet again midweek when I you know, have this worked out in a couple of days, or if you think we should wait another week. Uh, 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 Jan, this is Philip. I, I, I love the idea of helping anybody we can, however we can, and people are really hurting. Um, and uh, I, I think I, I, I like all the things that you recommended, and I, I'd be all, all in favor of doing it right now. Bob, you have an opinion? I, 
unmute here for a minute. Um, yeah, uh, uh, my opinion is almost always to go along with what Dan recommends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jan, you're recommending that we approve section 10 and the two items in section 11? I'm recommending you approve them next week. <laughs> and I hope next not to change my mind by next week. You, you, uh, I, I, am, uh, I am happy if we meet midweek. I mean, if we're gonna meet, make a phone call and have a short meeting and can do it if you wanna do it midweek, Jan. I would like that. I would like to have a couple more. I mean, I just we just got the notification today, and the questions yeah. all just started rolling out today. So I, I feel like I, I was ready to come forward and ask you to approve it before all of the details started showing up. Yeah. All right. So how about Thursday night for meeting? Sure. Okay. That's good. Okay. okay. Good. Everyone? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's I mean, meet Thursday night what? at six o'clock. Okay. I should only need 10 minutes of your time at most. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you should have a lot more information by then. Yeah. Okay. So, Tom, let's do a meeting for uh, Thursday night at 6. Everybody's okay with that? Yeah. Again, yeah. could I just add a suggestion that maybe we put the, the town garage uh, finance thing on the agenda and just that it would be a good time to have Walter and Kenny just call in and to talk about it then. Get it, dealt, get it over with? I don't know. Just a suggestion. You're free to ignore it. I, I don't know what what they're going to be able to tell us, but we'll put them on the agenda. All right. All right, Tom, Great. let's put those two items on the agenda. Okay. All right. Dan, thank you for all your work on this. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Jim. And we'll, uh, we'll talk Thursday then. Okay. Good. Thank and you. maybe we can do that by video. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, that'd be fine. That'd, that'd be, be fine. a good uh, good first pass, first try. That's yeah. true. Yes. Tom, you think we can have that done by then? I'll try. Okay. That's great. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is your update. Uh, yeah, I, I emailed uh, something out. I think it's it's the last version I have. Um, the only uh, committee news I have is that the uh, planning board is nearing a final order of conditions for Vertex Tower to build a cell tower off South Deerfield Road between the Deerfield Line and Matthews Road. The final draft is being reviewed by town council. Um, so uh, I expect that will move forward. Um, in departmental news, uh, we've changed the due date for invoices for all departments, boards, and committees to uh, Fridays at noon. Um, and I thought I had uh, let you know earlier, but I, I may not have, the Child Abuse Awareness flag raising event was canceled by the sponsoring organization due to the pandemic. I, I think you let us know that. Yeah, yeah, it was scheduled to be last week. I, I didn't, I couldn't find it, so uh, I thought I'd just make sure because it was going to be next week. Um, and uh, as we talked about before, I plan to put on next week agendas, next week's agenda, a discussion of postponing town meeting. Um, as you'll recall, today would normally be the day the select board would sign the warrant. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm considering sending out the town report early. Uh, as soon as we know we're postponing town meeting along with a note explaining that. Nick Filler says that he'll declare a postponement of town meeting at the select board's request. Uh, with the current legislation, he can postpone town meeting 30 days at a time. Uh, and it would probably be good to do it based on that because it is in the town's bylaws that we have it on the uh, second Monday in um, May, uh, right? We 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 may actually want to have some kind of a convening and in order to postpone, uh, just I, to be absolutely legally clear. Uh, state I law think, supersedes we, town. Get, state law supersedes town bylaw. I think we have to convene uh, to to move the meeting, Tom. 
No, we don't. State law supersedes town bylaw. State law is directly on point saying it's, you can postpone it and, with, and lays out the procedure. It doesn't matter what your bylaws say anymore. Ask the town lawyer. Right. But we do have to convene. Uh, no, the procedure to postpone it is set out in the, in, in the law that was passed a couple of weeks ago. And it, we're, we're doing it. It's the, the select board, the, 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 the moderator, whatever. The moderator decides based on the select board's recommendation. That's all that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, he'll, be, he'll be waiting for a select board decision on that. Uh, and, you know, I, I think we'd be safe. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it next week. That's why I'm saying I'm putting it on the agenda next week. All right. Uh, so the uh, uh, also the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, and they manage our community development money for uh, block grant money for housing rehabilitation. Uh, they have asked whether the town would like to add some pandemic-related rental assistance to our CPA funding. It's something that community preservation money can be used for. Uh, and they're, they're offering to process applications, establish qualifying factors, and verify income eligibility, and otherwise administer the program, including paying the landlords. There would be an administrative cost. They're calculating that now. Uh, there are about 15% of Conway residents, 115 uh, rental housing units in Conway as of 2018. I'll be getting a more formal proposal and forwarding that to the Community Preservation Committee. Since we do have extra time, it is conceivable we could put this on the agenda, but I'll, I'll add that to uh, next week's agenda as well to talk about a poli you know, whether the select board thinks that's a good policy or not. Um, I go on to mention that I've been trying to get a government account from Zoom after requests from both the planning board and the select board chair. That allows multiple accounts to be used at the same time, among other additional features. Uh, but Zoom has uh, so far not responded to either a web form, which I did get an email confirmation for, or a phone call. Uh, they are very busy. Uh, the planning board is particularly interested in having something web-based for their April 16th hearing on the citizens' petition to repeal the marijuana bylaw, though a revised petition has not been submitted, and the planning board has an email out to the petitioners to ask whether they plan to move forward. Uh, in any case, it looks like I will be setting up uh, one or two regular Zoom accounts for town use uh, and probably taking whatever the premium uh, packages for that to allow for more host control during calls. Uh, also, finally, there are various COVID-19 conference calls happening regularly. One is regional between the frontier towns and includes boards of health, public safety staff, and town administrators. One is statewide with MMA hosting MEMA and Department of Public Health reports. And one is a brief check-in for Conway. Uh, so far, communication is fairly good. I'm still looking for clarity and options for quarantine and isolation for first responders, but I think I got that tonight. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> uh, so that's my uh, update. Great. Thank you, Tom. All right. Any, uh, any concerns of our selectmen? <laughs> Let me say this as a concern. I'm not sure whether it's the right word, but anyway. Um, so last week we talked about a proposal from Colonial of how they wanted to move forward um, with uh, getting indicative pricing that's going to allow us to make a decision after Eversource has announced their next rates. And, and Colonial is asking us in a very general way, and I don't even think we need to vote on this, but they're asking us, do we, do we agree with that? Are we comfortable with their current plan? And they're not going to ask us to vote on anything until around the middle of May when they have those numbers. 
So uh, we, they, they were going to send that. They sent us out a letter that describes the plan, which is exactly what we talked about last week. And but they did request, "What are we okay with this?" And you know, and so in a general sense, I'm just asking John and Bill, "Are you guys okay?" With this? There was a way to kill the Eversource, the Eversource uh, rates or no. That's right. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I don't quite, I'm, I, if, if you're asking, like, to me, it's, I, I don't want to do it if they don't save money, if people don't save money over Eversource. Is that what you're asking? Um, well, yes. Although, this yeah, town we'll be, even join if we weren't going to save money over Eversource. Right. And originally, Colonial was so excited about the rates that they're looking at and so confident that they were going to get rates lower than Eversource that they were encouraging the group of all of our to this town. Oh, Bob. And Bob, you're, you're, you're fading out pretty badly there. And we encourage them to please wait, even if it was a week or two, until Eversource came out with their rates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let, 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 me, let me put this on the agenda for next week, just so that we, we have it there and everybody can review the letter that they sent out. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get that on uh, tonight's agenda. Okay. <laughs> They have to have this by April 15th, so, so that would be fine. We could vote on it yeah. next week. We'll make sure everyone gets the letter. Um, yeah, we, we don't want to vote on it until we have the other source rates, Bob. That, that's, you know, we don't want to vote before that. So, uh, John, I completely agree with you. And the other source rates are going to be out on May 15th, so it'll have to be after May 15th. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. now they're talking about May 20th. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Great. I'll, send, I'll, send, I'll make sure you get the letter. It's exactly what we talked about last week. But, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Philip, do you have anything? Uh, no, I don't. Any concerns? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing that we can okay. cure in a few minutes of conversation. <laughs> All right. It, under mail, I got an email this afternoon, and I think we all got a copy of that email for uh, one of the residents uh, who was supportive of uh, Priscilla Lynch's position on the forestry issue. We all got that, right? Yes. 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 Okay. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, we have any announcements? Uh, I just wanted to uh, remind uh, everyone that I have an updated letter to Governor Baker um, in support of his, uh, his signing the municipal relief bill, and uh, I'm just leaving that on the table here. I'm hoping that both John and Phil can come in and sign it uh, at some point, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just send it in. Uh, once, once I have a couple of signatures on that, and, and John, this this is a new version, so the one you signed before is uh, is uh, gone. Right, right. Okay. All right. I'll be in the morning to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, so. Something else to come before the board. Then we have our next meeting on Thursday evening at six o'clock. Uh, for those two items that we want to put on the agenda. Great. Okay. Anything okay. else? And hopefully that's, hopefully that's a Zoom meeting. If not, uh, hopefully Monday the 13th will be a Zoom meeting. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Yes. Second. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Uh, Yes. Bob. Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Have a good See night. You.